Podcasts are hot right now. How do I know? Well, you're listening to one right now, aren't you? But you might be wondering, how on earth do I get my voice out there and start my own podcast? It all seems so intimidating. Between hosting and platforms and monetization, it can get real complicated real quick. Well, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We started this podcast over two years ago, not knowing clue one on how to do it. So how do we do it? We did it with Anchor. Anchor is the free podcast app with creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on all the platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And everybody likes money, right? Well, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So go right now, download the free Anchor app, or go to Anchor FM to get started. It's the E-Commerce Minute, your daily dose of e-commerce, tech, and retail news with your host, John Suter, Bart Moraz, and Brittany Blackman. The E-Commerce Minute is a production of Sumo Heavy, a digital commerce consulting firm located in Brooklyn, New York, and Philadelphia. Find us on the web at sumoheavy.com. It's E-Commerce Minute episode 706. In today's episode, Walmart and Nextdoor partner for shopping assistance. During the past few weeks, Walmart has been doing a lot to adjust to the new way of life brought on by COVID-19. The company has expanded contactless options for in-store pickup and delivery, limited how many customers can shop at one time, and reserved pickup times for at-risk shoppers. Now the company is taking a step further through a partnership with a social networking app. Neighborhood social network Nextdoor and Walmart are teaming up to launch a new Neighbors Helping Neighbors program that will make it easier for vulnerable community members to get assistance from neighbors who are already planning a trip to Walmart. The new in-app feature will allow Nextdoor users to post groups associated with their local Walmart store to request shopping assistance. The effort enables community members to coordinate the contactless pickup and delivery of essentials like groceries or medication. To find the new option, Nextdoor users can either use the Nextdoor website or a mobile app. From there, users will go to the Groups tab where they'll see local Walmart stores pinned to the top of the page. Members can then post a message to the group feed where they can ask for help or offer to help others. Members who connect in the feed can then work out the details on the message board or through direct message where they can share more private details like their address and what they need from the store. Walmart isn't moderating or managing these Nextdoor groups, to be clear, but worked with Nextdoor to make the feature available. But Nextdoor will make the Walmart groups easy to find by pinning them to the top of the groups tab. Meanwhile, Walmart store locations and hours where Neighbors Helping Neighbors is available can be found on Nextdoor's help map. For the retailer, the addition isn't just beneficial in terms of directing customers to Walmart to shop. It's also seen as a way to reduce the number of people who come to the store in person. Win-win all around. I like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great. Mm-hmm. People helping people. Now, what did we say when this all started? We were going to try to focus on more of the, you know, find the helpers. And I like these stories because... We've seen there's some dark side to all of this pandemic stuff, but there is also mm-hmm. some bright spots, and I think this is one of them. And I can say for myself, through all of this, I've found myself reaching out to people more, connecting with people more, and that's not me. That's just not my nature. I think everybody can just go away. Um, <laughs> no, it's not your nature <laughs> at not all. My nature at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny this is a like funny not funny but definitely not <laughs> <laughs> definitely not <laughs> and our neighbors except for the one on the left that cuts the grass while i'm podcasting all of my other neighbors have gotten a lot closer like we're helping each other out with food we're passing food across the fence we're you know oh let me, i'm going here let me pick this up for you i'm going there i'll share this with you and i think that's one of the positive things that has happened. And I'm also seeing, even though I think Facebook is a toilet, I have to go in there, A, because it's part of my job, and B, it's, you know, I have to find out what's going on in my neighborhood. That's the only place I can find out. We're seeing that a lot of neighbors are helping each other and doing similar things, similar acts of kindness, which is never a bad thing. Nextdoor is a very strange app. I don't know if you guys have ever spent any time on that. I remember when it, yes. first, came around, when it first came around. Do you guys remember when they sent the postcards out? Yeah. And yeah. everybody was on the face. I got a postcard from this thing. Is it real? <laughs> Are they trying? To, is someone trying to attack me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't really get it. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like, why are they sending me a postcard? I don't know why I got this postcard. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, next door has been interesting. I mean, it's definitely interesting from the perspective of like where the neighborhoods are. So like I have it set on sort of where I live, but it's all Fairmount stuff because on that border, 
but I kind of want the other side <laughs> and it doesn't, it's such a weird thing. Sometimes. Yeah. It's funny. You follow different neighborhoods and the, the tone of just, just a neighborhood that is maybe like, you know, a half a mile from you, the tone is completely. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. And you want to get into weird apps like that citizen app. Uh, oh, that's just, that is yeah. just, it freaks you out. And actually like when we're all in, like it freaks you out. Cause like every time it's like, Oh wait, there's a shooting like a block away and i'm like i'm not going well, anywhere <laughs> and here's the thing and i was just telling you guys about some incidents that we had in my neighborhood and here's the thing you know you're going to get on the facebook group and you're going to get the oh look what's happening to the neighborhood go back 10 years oh look what's happening to the neighborhood go back 20 years oh look what's happening to the neighbor this stuff has always happened it's yeah. just now that you have social media everybody knows about it <laughs> wow, people it's, it's, literally right. have no concept of that no, it, <laughs> like no, they no. Can't. very it's so amplified you know yeah that's the word i was searching for it's it's amplified everything yeah. is very amplified through all these social media apps but circling back to this part here i think this is one thing where people can you know next door weird place man there's a couple really great twitter and facebook accounts that find all the weird next door stuff it's like can someone tell my neighbor to stop cooking food i'm a vegan and i can't smell our food <laughs> <laughs> you know, weird things like that. But I mean, people reaching out to help each other, I think it's a great thing. And, you know, Walmart didn't have to do anything for this. You know, it doesn't seem like they had to do it. Technologically, it didn't seem like they had to do much to make this happen. So I'm glad they let it happen instead of trying, you know, instead of the lawyers jumping in and saying, no, that's no good. You know, just let it organically happen. People helping people, I think it's a great thing. All right, we're going to close with a little stat time. Over the past few weeks, Nextdoor says it's seen a 7% increase in people joining groups to help one another. Walmart's app has suppressed downloads of the Amazon app by 20%, the research found. Walmart Grocery saw 460% growth in the average daily downloads as of April 5th compared to January of this year. And finally, downloads of shopping apps in general in the U.S. hit 14.4 million during the week, March 29 to April 4, app Andy found out, which was 20% increase from the weekly average in January. Globally, shopping app downloads hit 106 million for the same week, up 15% from January's weekly average. That's for Retail Dive, no surprise there. And I'll just give you a little side. I've been doing the Walmart versus Target thing. I was always team Target, but Walmart seems to have more stuff and quicker delivery and I don't know. Walmart's winning me over and I hate to even have those words come out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> They've done good stuff, man. They've done good stuff. Their app is great. Target is a little confusing because Target gives you three options. This should be in a different podcast, boring for people who aren't tuning in to talk about Target. But Target gives you three options when you buy something. It's in-store pickup, ship, or ship via shipped, which is a completely different thing and is a completely different fee. If you do not understand that, the app is complete confusion. Like if I show it to someone who does not understand those three things, they're like, well, how do I get my stuff? You can put it in the cart, <laughs> then you have three ways to get it and it gets a little confusing. So that's that. All right. You guys, get any of those? Nope. Nope. All right, the G Commerce Minute for today. We'll see you on the internet tomorrow. That's it for today's show. If you like the show, do us a favor and subscribe or leave us a review on iTunes. And don't forget, you can now listen to the e commerce minute on your Amazon device. Just add e commerce minute to your flash briefing. And finally, if you have a comment or suggestion or just want to say hi, find us on social media at Sumo Heavy. <laughs>